Hey, my friends, welcome back to the Uncommodified Podcast. I'm Tim Windsor, and this is another Encore Conversation, my favorite kind of conversations. My guest today is children's author and Louis's best friend. You're going to learn a little bit about Louis tonight. We'll tell you who he is in a second. Louis's best friend, Zach Myers. Zach, welcome to the show. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. Really awesome. excited to be on. Uh, this is going to be a great conversation. So today, Zach and I are going to explore this question. Here's the question we're going to look at. It's it's a big life question. This is what it is. What can a Chihuahua named Louie and his buddy, who loves to travel, teach me and my grandkids and you and your children? That is a big life question, and we're going to explore that tonight with Zach because he's written an excellent book, and it comes grandkid approved, Windsor grandkid approved, I should suggest, because we've been uh, exploring this book together. So a bit about Zach before we get started. Zach grew up in Connecticut, spent most of his adult life in Brooklyn, New York. You might pick up a little of these things in the accent maybe tonight, who knows? <laughs> Currently lives in Philly, and uh, for those of you who actually do not uh, live in North America, that is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States of America. He's a diehard New York Jets fan, football fan that is not soccer for uh, those people across the pond. That is American football. He's an animal lover. We're going to learn a lot more about that today. And he is the author of a children's book that I just read to my grandkids the other day for the second time. This is the book. If you're on uh, uh, the YouTube channel, that's the book right there. It is called The Real Life Adventures of Louie, the World Traveling Chihuahua. That is what we're going to explore today. But before we do that, Zach, all good on court conversations for me, they start with a drink. So what are you going to drink tonight, my friend, as we explore this topic together? So I have with me, and I just have to correct you on one one thing, Tim, which is, is a very big correction. It's okay. actually diehard New York, a Giants fan. Oh, so did I say that's, Jets? That's, oh, yeah, my, that's, gosh. my my life isn't that miserable. So. Oh, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Thanks for correcting me. I, I, I beg your forgiveness. Although we have, us Giants fans have been in a bit of misery lately. So um, we're, we're, I feel the Jets pain. Well, fans fair pain, enough. And but. plus, you have this, don't you not go out of the same stadium? We do. We do, unfortunately, share a stadium with those second-rate citizens. There you go. It's kind of sort of crazy. So, hey, listen, what are you going to drink tonight? And by the way, I haven't already been drinking. That's not why I got that wrong, but you never know. What Neither have tonight? I. Hey, what are you drinking? So, so I have here a, a Clay Shannon. It's a 2021 Cabernet Sauvignon from Lake County, California. Did pop it open about a half an hour before we started to breathe and uh, felt it was good for the season. So. Awesome. Well, listen, I'm going Californian red, too. I got a Jay Lore, one of our favorite uh, reds. Paso Robles, great place, uh, 2018. I'm going to pour my glass off a glass. You pour yourself a glass. Absolutely. And then we can uh, get the party started. Yeah, Cheers, my do friend. It. To you. Cheers. Excellent. Now, I do want to make uh, just a point about this. Um, I typically don't drink wine just before I read my grandchildren a children's story. But, you know, it might go more interesting if I did. Oh, that's for another conversation. <laughs> we won't do that. All right. Listen, let's get this uh, conversation started. Here's a question that I want you to think about, Zach. What drove your passion to become a children's book author? Um, you're not, you don't look like your typical children's book author, Zach. So why in the world did Zach Meyer say, I'm going to write a children's book? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Tim. Uh, my whole life, I've always been kind of unconventional. Um, I've been uh, unforgivingly myself always. Hmm. I, I, I haven't changed for anybody and. You know, I just came to a point in my life where where I refused to. I'm just going to, you know, kind of felt like when I was younger, oh, I need to be this way for this person and this way in front of that person. And finally, I just threw that all out the window and I said, you know, I'm just going to be myself. So you, you're correct in that. I do not look at all like your conventional children's book author, which I kind of like. I like to keep people guessing. So, yeah. um, but to answer your question, um, I kind of have three passions in life. I have several, but the big three are um building relationships traveling and animals and obviously you and i know each other on a professional level as well so yep. kind of nailed down the traveling and the building relationships with the career that i have and so that left uh only the animals out and you know i'd, I'd been thinking about it for a while and i always wanted to i've always had like a creative kind of mindset um and you know, I had a conversation one day with a uh, friend of mine. This is back in, uh, I think, 2017, 2018, uh, at a housewarming event down in Baltimore. And 
I told him, you know, I, I've always wanted to eventually be self-sufficient or at least fulfill this other passion that I have, um, which is obviously animals. Um, wasn't interested in becoming a veterinary, a, a vet at all. Um, so that was out the window. Just trying to think of how I can channel it. And he said, well, you know, and we, when we were having this conversation, I hadn't, you know, talked about animals. I just talked about, you know, uh, this friend of mine, he's very self-sufficient. And that was kind of the subject. And, you know, I expressed to him that I'd like to eventually be that way as well and just kind of have a freelance and self-sufficient kind of lifestyle. And, you know, he knew my love of Louie and just animals in general. And he kind of concluded our conversation with, well, you need to find a way to channel that. And mm. that that's your kind of your answer right there. And, you know, I thought about it and I thought about it. And finally, one day I'm walking home from the gym and I said, you know, Louis would travel with me all the time. And I said, you know, that might be a great idea for a children's book. You know, it'd make maybe kids get more comfortable with the idea of traveling, make it kind of fun. And, you know, I remember my first time traveling when I was a kid, I was really anxious, really nervous. And um, so I got home and I'm like, somebody has had to have done this before. This idea can't be new. And it's kind of one of those things where you just you don't think you have an original idea. Once you, once you think about it, you always just assume somebody's done it before. So I Googled it in every which way possible, could not find, you know, anybody that did anything like it before, or wrote anything that down that same, uh, down that same path. So, and then obviously I, uh, I'm sure you can relate to this. I just kind of forgot about it. And I was like, ah, oh, well, it's a good idea, but yeah, you know, it, it's, it's an idea is all it is. And then uh, COVID happened. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I had, uh, as, as a lot of us did, I had a lot of extra free time and, um, I used that and I said, I said, you know what, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to take this idea and I'm going to run with it and I'm actually going to do it and hired an editor and did the looking up that I needed to do in terms of, you know, which route that I had to go in term to actually get this thing out there. And, and I did it. So I'm, I still can't believe that I did a lot of the time, but there it is. Wow. That's an interesting journey. So, so you were thinking about this idea that you got this this dog, Louie. He, he's a Chihuahua, and you travel together. And you had this experience when you were a kid where traveling had some anxiety and some challenges in it. And you thought, "Hey, I could tell a story here that could potentially be helpful to kids. I can give it my own twist." And so, Louie enters your life at some point. Of course, you haven't had Louie forever. How old is Louie, by the way? He just turned 12 in September. Wow. September 8th. So he's, yep. Okay, so he's got he's got some chops. Louis got some chops there. Yeah, oh yeah, still a spry little guy though. He is, yeah, that for sure. I think I've I mean I think we I saw him one time on online. He's he's a spry little fella. Oh, so, he makes his appearances. He does. He does. So how did Louis inspire you along the way? So when you look at this experience that you're having with this dog and the story in this story, you take him, this is one of the adventures you have because you've traveled, how, how many miles have you and Louis put on together? Oh right boy. It's in the back of the book and I can't remember what it was when I published that. Maybe you've got a copy right there in front of you. I mean, Maybe you, know you can what? tell I'll me tell what you, it was When you published the book, you had 50,000 miles. 50,000. So it's we've done quite a bit this year. This might have been our most heavy year of traveling, 2023. And that was published about three years ago now. I want to say he's, he's got to be at 25,000 more. He has to be. Wow. No, wow. We've, so we've this, done... guy, this, this little guy's at 75,000 miles on the clock. That's awesome. Yep. So I believe we... he's at... 33 states now, I believe it is. Wow, is 33 total? states, 75,000 yep. miles. This dog gets around, baby. That's yeah. awesome. So you get Louie, and uh, tell us the story of Louie, and tell us the story of how Louie brings inspiration to you along the way in your life, in the real life, and then mm -hmm. how that inspiration finds its way into the book. Well, when I did end up getting Louie, it, it was a very big turning point in my life. Um, I had just come out of a, a long-term relationship uh, back in New York, I decided to pick up and leave and try my luck in Philadelphia. And, you know, I was traveling there for work a lot. And I said, you know what, I want to try something different. So uh grabbed an apartment lease down there for two years to try it out. And that was when I, I came across Louie. One of the things that I wasn't able to do um, earlier than earlier in that when I was living in Brooklyn was um, I wasn't able to have a dog where I was living. And I always wanted one. You know, we grew up with a dog. And so, um 
went through a couple of agencies uh, to meet a dog and find a dog I like. I knew I wanted a small dog. And I, I remember when uh, there's a woman from uh, Paws, which is an adoption agency down in Philadelphia, and she called me up and, you know, I submitted a form and she calls me back and she goes, hey, we have a dog for you. I think you'd, you'd like to meet him. It's a Chihuahua. And I was like, yeah, Chihuahua, I don't, I don't know. Like my, my knee, so I'll be fully transparent. My knee jerk reaction was like, I'm not going to be interested in a Chihuahua. I want a small dog. No interest in a Chihuahua. So it wasn't Louie. I uh, went to meet this, this Chihuahua uh, with the foster that it was with and uh, fell in love with it. Kind of, kind of bonded with it in our first meeting and, uh, lo and behold, the foster after our meeting decided to keep the dog for herself. So I was, I was very disappointed at that time. Um, I, I bought all the dog stuff. I called the, you know, called the adoption agency. I said, this dog is great. I'm going to take them. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. But a um, couple of days later, I came across Louie on a, uh, an, a uh, an adoption uh, site uh, based in Bucks County, which is uh, just north of Philadelphia. So my sister and my brother-in-law were down visiting uh, for the for the weekend. It was a uh, right in between Christmas and New Year's, so I told them I wanted to go up there and meet with them. And you know, when I when I walked by the cages, Louis just jumped up. He had to, it, it was almost like he was just immediately drawn to me. It really was. Um, it was, it was it, he didn't bark. He just jumped up, had his paws on the cage, and was just, just wanted me to come over there. So went over. I played with him a little bit. They took him out of his cage, and I said you know, this is, this is, this is the guy right here. And so I couldn't take him with me that day. I had to wait till the manager was there. And that took him a couple of days later and picked him up. And, you know, at first I didn't travel with him. You know, I thought that, you know, everything that came with it is, it's like, kind of like you're, you're thinking conventionally, um, you know, people have dogs and they, they, they leave them at home and that's just how it is. And, you know, I was doing that at first. I found some uh, people off a of rover and was having them watch him. Some friends of mine would come over and he would stay home at his own house and they'd come in and check on him. He's very self-sufficient. But a couple of months, I said, you know what? I might be able to just take him with me here. I, th I think I can figure this out. And lo and behold, that's what I started doing. And he's been traveling with me for years now. And, you know, to answer your question about the, the inspiration, just he's he's very much like me and a lot of his characteristics. and um He's also, I mentioned when I got him, was kind of a turning point in my life, almost like a coming of age period. And he inspired me to, be, I would say, be responsible. And uh -huh. I had been very irresponsible before that. Um, not as much as some people might be irresponsible, but I had made some poor decisions before that. And um, yeah, I would say he really inspired me to be responsible. Oh, that's interesting. That that yeah. is interesting. And you know, I, what I love in this in the in the book is you tell the in the beginning of the this particular book, and I have a feeling this is going to be uh, one of many that we're going to hear about Louis's adventures. But you talk about you 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 just you talk about the scene and you write about the scene when you adopted Louis. And I have to admit, it was uh, I love the way you told the tale. I love the way you weaved the story in and. By the way, you might even hear my dog. My dog is uh, funny <laughs> enough. He's outside of my studio right now whining because no one's home and I can hear him whining there. So if I'll leave him out there. I'm so hopefully someone will find him soon, meaning there's someone else in the house. So I'll have to come down and get him. But I can hear him out there whining. So that's hilarious. Um, so, you know, you tell this story and it's a great story about how he comes into your life. You have this encounter. Um, now, when you're traveling with Louis, like, uh, is this car travel? Is this, are you just going in the car? Like, what are you doing here? So we do both. Um, he'll travel with me in the car, which is very easy. Um, and then he'll also fly with me, which can be a bit costly. But yeah. I'm, the, I'm the kind of person I value experience and time spent over uh, money. Um, you know, I'll, I'll always be able to make more money. I'll never get to be able to buy more time with him. So, huh. You know, the, the, the costs are what they are, um, and it's I will never, ever, ever in the future at any point think, oh, that wasn't worth it. I, I want that money back, you know. Uh, um, so awesome. and it, it, it's it's interesting with the flight travel. Um, first flight was a little bit rough and it was a transcontinental flight, uh, Philadelphia to San Francisco. Um, so about six hours. <laughs> and uh, he's gnawing at the inside of his carrier under in the seat underneath the seat in front of me and, you know, barking quite a bit. And it got better and better and better as time went on to the point where now he just he lays there. I keep the top open. And he just sleeps the entire time. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, in this book, you tell a story, and I don't want to give it away because people, you got to buy this book, and we're going to tell you to get it, where to get it later. But so you tell a story of this encounter you have in this hotel, and some uh, uh, something that Lou, Louis mistakes for for a for a water bowl or for. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it, just want to okay. So is this a true story or is this a made up story? Okay, so I will be I'll be transparent. That part was uh, fictional by me. That that part did okay. not happen. That was a fictional account. Um, there, there is, there are some truths woven into the book, um, okay. certain elements of the book, but that is not one of them. So no, okay. I, 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 okay. I can't sit here and lie. And so say there's some creative author license within the storytelling. Okay. And that's fair enough. I just, but I tell you what, it's a great, it's a great part of the story. I, I like that part of the story. My granddaughter, Gwen, when I was reading to her, she liked that part of the story as well. Mm-hmm. So well done, my friend. It's well yeah. written and I appreciate the story and I love the journey. So here's a question. So why do you think this theme about, you know, being responsible, taking our pets, you know, taking your your dog with you, the lessons he's learning, the lessons you're learning. Why do you think this book is so important for parents and kids? What what are the lessons that you you've woven into this that you feel that parents and kids might be able to take from the story as they read it? Um, I think one of the, the biggest things, and this is expressed at the end of the book, obviously you've read it, so you, you'll know what I'm talking about, but is the theme of uh, true love and mm. bonding. And I think those that's my biggest takeaway from the book. Obviously, there's other things um, like we discussed at the beginning of the podcast about, um, you know, cutting down on the anxiety or the nervousness of travel. You know, I'd like to make it, make it fun, you know, make it feel fun, make, a, make children feel excited about it. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me and I, the way that I wrote the ending, just it, it, it almost came to me naturally. It was one of those things I really didn't have to think about it. And once I finished it, I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. And again, that's the, the, the theme of bonding and, and true love. That's awesome. And, you know, and I'll, I, I feel the same way with my dog. We, we had a dog when we first got married. Uh, and then uh, the dog, uh, uh, we had to, had to put the dog down because it got injured and we didn't have a dog for a long time. And then um, we, we sort of, uh, well, I sort of tricked my wife into getting a dog about maybe well, eight years ago or so. My daughter had a friend at work and they were looking for a home for their dog. And the dog actually went to my son and my daughter-in-law's house first, and they already had a dog and a young baby, and it really wasn't working out. So I said to my wife, well, let's just take him for a test drive for the weekend. Let's just take him for a weekend. And, uh, of course, I was uh, being a little sneaky with that, so we did. And, of course, like he came, and he like he got right into our hearts right away. He is a cross between a Chihuahua and a Dash Hound. So his name is Jackson. Technical breed is a Chihuahua, which is a strange mm-hmm. name for a dog. Uh, and we also now travel a lot with Jack. So we got a trailer a couple of years ago and sort of said, well, we'll see how this works. And Jack loves to go in the car. He loves to go in the trailer. And it's really strange because he's very territorial at home. He, he's uh, So we're in the neighborhood and stuff. He sees a dog. If that dog's close to his territory, that's not a good day for the other dog because he gets little dog syndrome and goes a bit crazy. But when we travel, he's not territory at all. He doesn't bark at dogs. He doesn't do anything. But he's just so chill, and he loves being with us in those environments. So I can I can identify with that, and I love traveling with my dog. Now, I've never flown with my dog, and I'm not sure I, I've got the guts to do that. So that's pretty impressive, Zach. I like that a lot. And I will say I liked the oh, I like the theme in this book. I like the lessons. Uh, and, you know, as an adult reading it, you know, you're get you're you're reading. I'm reading it, and I know that my granddaughter isn't getting all the lessons. She's just getting the story. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the lessons, and that's something I like about kids' books. And you know, now that I'm older, you know, I'm almost sixty, and with grandkids, you know, you go through this time when your kids are young. You read them, you read them kids' books, and then of course you don't read kids' books for a long time. The gift of being a grandparent now is you read kids' books again, and I'm realizing that there's a lot of you know, wonderful lessons in these kids' books that I think kids get eventually, but also as you read them as a parent, you get them, and I think then what you do is you start saying, how do I apply that little lesson in my life? How do I apply it in my kid's life? It's it's just a really wonderful, funny, crafty story, and I, I really believe that um, it's hopefully the first of many, and I, I'd be interested to, to know you know, where is Louie going to go next? I, I could see this being kind of an interesting journey. I mean, you know, we know where he, we know in this book, but where is he going to show up next will be kind of interesting. So listen, if people want to find this book, how are they going to find it? 
Um, it's available on all uh, big box platforms, Target, Walmart.com, BarnesandNoble.com. Barnes & Noble is the, usually the one that I go to. You can go through me directly. Um, okay. I can provide a personalized copy. copy. Um, also, he has his own Instagram account, uh, Louis Loves Planes, uh, which uh, the link is in there. And you can also DM me directly um, with any questions or if you'd like a personalized copy, you can get, you can get it that way. Okay. Um, so, so Louis loves planes. So at Louis loves planes on Instagram and that so documents all his travel as well. That's hilarious. So, uh, so you can follow Louis there and you can get a hold of Zach. You can get a copy of the book from Zach or you can get it online. I bought mine on Amazon. And again, this, the book is, this is the book if you're online and the book is called, this particular book is the real life adventures of Louis, the world traveling Chihuahua. I'm going to read the back of this book just for interest's sake. So, stuck living in an animal shelter, a small chihuahua named Louie is adopted by his soon-to-be best friend, Big Buddy, which I think would be Zach, Big Buddy. Together, they embark on their first road trip adventure where Louie comes to realize his love of traveling and learns what it is like to be truly cared for. It's a great story. I appreciate it, and I love that you wrote it. So, here's a question. Mm-hmm. So when you think of your the lessons you've learned by doing this, so now you've got this children's book, you've written it, you, put, you have some vision to write some other books, some other children's books. So what have you learned about yourself along the way, Zach, in doing this? What is there anything you learned about yourself that was surprising as you did this project, as you got it into the real world, as you started getting feedback? What did you learn? The fact that, I mean, this is kind of obvious, but this is the biggest takeaway for me. It was the fact that I have the ability to actually do something like this, you know, before I actually put it out there. And I kind of touched on this earlier is just I, I, I thought it could just be an idea and that's it. And I didn't really believe, you know, when I thought about it, ah, that I was actually ever going to do this. And, um, you know, we've talked about this in conversations that you and I have had before where it's a very surreal moment. Once you're, you're, you finally see that copy of the book, your, your baby, like right in front of you, it's a very surreal moment. So I think that's one of the things that I've learned is not, don't ever think you can't do something. Don't, don't ever give up. Don't ever think that you, you, you know, you're not good enough, um, or that it won't work. Um, that's definitely one of the, the my biggest takeaway or my biggest lesson learned from having published this is, you know, never think that it can't happen because it can it almost goes That's back awesome. to the, the cliche of, you know, you, if you work hard enough, you can be whatever you, you want to be. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's, it is true to an extent. So, yeah. I mean, if you, if you put the work in and you actually really want to do it, it can, it can be done. You know, um, like you said before, I, I do not look at all like the conventional children's book author. So if I'm telling you right now, if I'm able to pull this off, I guarantee you almost anybody else can pull this <laughs> off. <laughs> And that's, it's, awesome. Uh, hey, no, that's awesome. And and listen, if you're listening in, just 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 think about what Zach said because it's really good. Because sometimes we 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 sort of uh, we we disqualify ourselves in life. We we decide we can't do, and because we decide we can't do, we can't. And the the world we live in today, you know, publishing, for instance, is in a different space. We we can curate our own content, just like this podcast. I didn't have to ask anybody's permission to do this podcast. Zach, you didn't have to ask anybody's permission to do your book. And so we live in a world where we can curate content in a different way. And I would just really just really seize on what Zach just said and just really encourage you. If you've got something in your mind and heart to do, do it. It could be writing a book. It could be uh, taking a trip somewhere. It could be making a, a, an impact in your community. It could be changing jobs because you want to do it. Whatever it is, you can – do so many things, but oftentimes the biggest thing is the limitation of your own beliefs. And and Zach, I do want to say publicly that, to, so that everybody knows, Zach was very helpful to me in my own publishing journey. So when I was looking at getting my book into the real world, I called up Zach because uh, Zach and I know each other through, through some business connections. I called up Zach and asked for some advice, and he gave me some really great advice. And Zach, I want to thank you because that really helped me get that my project to the to the end. It helped me select a great online partner uh, in Ingram Spark, uh, and that has really worked out well for me. Uh, you know, Zach uh, gave me a little bit of understanding of how that world worked and became a, a helpful partner to me in getting my book. Uh, out of my head into the real world, 
And it was surreal when I first got my book in my hand. And I remember talking to you, Zach, and saying, man, this is really bizarre. And you said, yeah, it does feel strange <laughs> after this thing has existed in your mind for so long. And all of a sudden, you got a book. So listen, if you want to do something, you got to get on it. You got to make it happen. And the only limitation ultimately and often in the end of the day is your own beliefs. And if you believe you can and you work hard, you can do anything you put your mind to. And I think that is a great lesson for sure. So let me ask you, Zach, as you know, my, my podcast is about this idea of uncommodification, about being different, being your unique self. You spoke about that a little bit as we started. So I've got a question. When you, when Zach comes in a room and, and, uh, and Zach bring, is bringing that, that special thing that Zach brings into relationship, into connection with people, what are you bringing uh, into that experience? What, you in your most uncommodified moment, what are you, what are you bringing into that room? I think just by being genuine, being myself, being authentic, and, you know, it's kind of something that we touched on before, um, and just refusing to, you know, adhere to the conventions of what somebody thinks you should be, and just being mm -hmm. authentic. I think that's uh, the biggest thing that I bring to a conversation. That's the biggest thing that I bring to a relationship. Um, I'm not going to, you know, in that same vein, I'm not going to be a yes man. I'm not going to tell, I'm going to tell somebody like it is, you know, um, you know, and you kind of touched on um, just a minute ago uh, with the, the, you know, your publishing um, and calling me and talking to me about it. And I think that's one of the things that I like to bring to the table as well, because I do like to help people in any way that I can. Anything that I have knowledge about myself that I can pass along to somebody else, that's one of the things that I love to do. So when you, you know, you were calling me to ask about the book, I, I, I couldn't wait to, to tell you this and tell you that. that that's just. Stuff like that is exciting for me. When I learn something um, just through going through the motions of life and uh, having an experience, and if I can pass that along to somebody else and help them with it, that, that makes me happy, and that's, that's what I can bring to, uh, to somebody else. That's awesome. And, and I will attest to that because I've seen Zach come into a room. I mean, Zach and I have a professional relationship as well, and so full disclosure, Zach works on a sales team. Uh, that uh, uh, that I do training on, and so I get to interact with Zach on a fairly regular basis. And we recently had uh, national sales meetings for this team. I got to meet Zach in person for the first time; never met him. And I will say, Zach, that you know when you come into a room, you come in in your full uncommodified self. You and I love it. You you are not conventional. You aren't just going to fit in and fall in line. But in in the midst of that, you're extremely respectful to the people around you, but you bring, you invite people in this ability to be different, to be themselves because you come in and you're just yourself. And, mm -hmm. and that opens up a spot and opens a way for other people to be themselves. And I, so I saw that firsthand when we got to meet in person. And it's kind of funny. We've had this online virtual relationship for you for a long time <laughs> from a training perspective and the training that I do. And, you know, we finally got to meet in person. And I will say that what Zach just said, about himself, I would just echo 100%. Uh, Zach is an unconventional guy who comes in and uh, just brings this this effervescent, this vitality, I think, to the moment. Uh, and that's what I really appreciate about you, Zach. And, and again, if you're listening in, I would just encourage you, figure out how to shake off the evil spell of sameness. Like, seriously. Just become yourself for the positive benefit of yourself and others. Don't be afraid to show the true of, the, of who you are. Bring your full expression into the moment. And because when you do, you open up space for other people to be themselves. And when we can be them ourselves and be authentic, there's something powerful that happens. And that's what I love about that. And, you know, Zach, there's sort of this, I don't, I don't know if this is the right word, but it's like this. there's this playful innocence to you as a person. You're just like, you're just sort of in the moment, having fun, uh, riding the, the wave. You work hard. You do a great job. You play hard. You've got this life as an author. You've got all this stuff going on. Uh, and then you've got this, this relationship that has brought such, uh, such, such a blessing to you, which is this relationship with Louie. And I love all that it is. And so I got to ask you on my podcast, are you going to write another children's book? I'm planning to, and I will to you, you touched on this uh, a little while ago where it takes place. It, I'll give it away. It does, it does take place in Los Angeles and this will be based on something you, you talked about the, uh, the one scene in the, in the first book. 
this is going to be based on something that's not fiction and actually happened to Louis. I'm going to take it and run with it a little bit, and there's yeah. going to be some uh, some some fiction, uh, you know, woven in there, and that's what's going to make the book exciting. But it that is going to be based on something that actually happened to uh, to Louis in Los Angeles a few years back. Awesome. Well, listen, yeah. I'm signing up for a copy right now for sure. So hold on, <laughs> give us that Instagram handle handle again. How do we find Louis and you? So that's Louis Loves Planes, all one word. Louis is L-O-U-I-E. Louis Loves Planes. Louis Loves Planes. So hunt down Zach, hunt down Louis. Listen, really appreciate this conversation, Zach. It's been a lot of fun. I, I love it. I love the story. And I love the story of, of who you are, who you're becoming, how you're getting there, Zach. And I can't wait to see what your future holds for you personally, professionally, and I can't wait for the next book to come out. Listen, if you listen today, you've listened for a reason. Make sure you track down this book. Read it to your kids. Read it to your grandkids. Enjoy the book. Have fun with it. Learn along the way. And there's a secret in this book, I think, also about belonging there's a secret in this book about how we bring people in and we show love to them and we change their experience because Louis' experience in that shelter wasn't so good. And Zach, <laughs> I have the feeling that when you guys met, you became a person that set Louis on a whole different course of life. And that's also something I love in the story because you got your dog from a shelter and you brought him into your world. And maybe more important, he brought you into your world, into his world, and that's what animals do for us, and that's the power that they have. I always say to people, if you want to understand the power of a dog, spell it backwards. Once you do, everything else makes sense. Listen, have a great day. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Thanks, then.